All right, so since I haven't found any information on how to add a snorkel to the Kimco Max or 450i, I've decided to real quick throw this together that will essentially show what I'm doing to snorkel it. Keep in mind that I'm not snorkeling everything. I'm not going to be snorkeling the uh, air intake or the CVT transmission vent tube for the front, like the, the incoming air. And I'm, I'm not doing any of that. I'm only going to be snorkeling the rear exhaust, uh, the CVT vent breather tube that comes out of the rear. Because originally, what that does is it hooks up to this. All it does is it hooks up to that and it comes up just a little bit and it breathes out there. The problem with that is that as you can see where that hole is, that does not come up very high. So if you get into any kind of water, and this is what happened to me, I got up to where the water was about right, about probably right above the transmission case. Splashed into some water, I lost all power because my belt got wet, which is shitty. So, I went to AutoZone and I got myself two radiator hoses. Now, it took me a while to find the right one, so I'm gonna go ahead and show what I got here. Um, this is the first one, this is the first radiator hose. The barcode and everything. I don't know what they're for, I don't know what they go to, but this is the first radiator hose that I got. And the second one is this one. It's basically an L, L radiator hose, or an angle, or 90, or whatever. Anyways. It is this. The idea here is that I'm going to be sticking this down into the engine to where it's going to be going down like this. And then it's going to come up and this is going to shoot towards the back. Then I'm going to be taking it and connecting it to this. So it's going to go up like so and it'll come up the back just a little bit well quite a bit but it'll go just connect to it I'll probably have to do some cutting here but then it'll go right up the back and out the back so once I do that I have these I went to Lowe's and I got a couple of these I don't know what they're called it's just PVC con PVC connection things I think they're in the waste part of it but this is gonna go on the one of the tips here. It'll actually be on the long side. But it'll come off the back and it'll face towards the back so no rain or anything or water splashing in will come down the tube. And this actually sticks on pretty tight by itself. I don't know if I'll have to try to glue it or tape it or anything, but it stays on pretty well by itself. So I'm just kinda of hoping that's gonna work out for me. As far as connecting the two radiator hoses, I went to all, while I was at Lowe's, I got these things and I have no fucking idea what these things are. No idea. This doesn't even have, okay. So this is the barcode and model number. It says C5801-2-7, one and a half inch. Barcode is 0399231952289. I got two of these. This comes with the cap. You don't need the cap. But essentially, what I found, motherfucker, what I found is that coming off of this right here, this screws in perfectly, fits perfectly. And then as far as this side, it goes in pretty loose, but that's okay because I have these that I'm going to put over it that I can tighten it on there. So this will stay on there. And then, this is the attachment that goes on to the transmission, right? So I'm going to take this and I'm gonna cut it, probably right around here, give or take. And then this is, I have another one, this is gonna go on here. It's also going to be clamped down with whatever the hell these things are called, I have no idea. But that's gonna be clamped down and it's gonna screw in on the other side. So, that's the parts, that's what I got. I think one of these radiator hoses were $30, the other one was $15.
probably $10 worth of shit from Lowe's, and that's it. That is what is going to allow me to hopefully reroute the CBT breather tube up to the rear and have it come up a little bit and poke off the top. So what I did first is I took the one that's going to be going down into the uh, to connect to the, to the vent and I cut that thing in half right there. You can see there. This is the exit part of it that just vented out. So I cut it in half and I, I don't like how it, it makes it sh like it shrinks it, but I don't think it's going to matter. I mean, it's still got a lot of room to breathe, but I just kind of sort of eyeballed it. And then I used those little metal wrapper clamper thingies and I lined it up to where I think it's going to be like this, I think. However, I did make sure that the screw here was to where I could reach it if I needed to adjust it. So now I'm doing a test fit. I'm going to put it on here and I'm going to see how it fits. All right, just a little progress update. I have this installed here. Let's see if I can get a good video of it. So as you can see, these are where I connected the, the first radiator hose and the vent tube. So I got that sitting there and I have that put on the CBT transmission or the whatever. And I did have to go through here and take this off and, and put it back on after I got that attached just because it was a pretty tight fit. Uh, the angle is just kind of weird. So getting it in here, I had to go up through the top and then like shove it and twist it and everything to get everything put together. So probably if I were to do this again, I would have just put on one side of the clamp and left the other side free and then shove that side in there and then just you know screw it on or tighten it up afterwards instead of kind of fighting and fussing with it like i did but um overall it's it's attached it's tight it's water sealed um then now it's coming up here and it is pointing back with just a little bit of uh, bending required so it will go up just like this and i'm going out the back so now what i'm going to do is take the second radiator and run it up towards the back here. I'm gonna kind of get that fitted correctly. This is this one. So I'm gonna shove that right here and I'm gonna figure out, oh, I probably don't even have to cut it. But either way, I'm gonna figure out how this is gonna fit, where I'm gonna mount it, that sort of thing, and then uh, get those attached. And that's about it. One thing I should note here when I'm getting everything lined up, I did use that second fitting that I had and one side screws in while the other side is just smooth. But with this first radiator hose, I actually don't think I'm going to need to tighten this down like I did the other one, um, which is good because I only have one other or one more of these, which is this one. So it should be, assuming it's held together correctly, good as it is. So we'll see. And now that I got everything kind of ran back to here, I have to find a way to get this to stay right about there, give or take. So I had to actually run back to Lowe's to try to get a solution. And I found this, this is a pipe holder thing. It closes like this and has a screw that closes it and keeps it clamped. So my idea, even though this is completely the wrong setup all around, my idea is to put this over this and then attach it to that somehow. Now, of course, I'm gonna have to cut off the excess here and probably twist this to make it line up with that hole. But I think, if I can do that, get it held up just like that, that'll give it kind of a middle ground support so it'll hold it up and hold it in the right position, or back and forth. So it'll hold it in the right position all, the, all around and just kind of keep it there. And I can tighten this pretty tight so it's not gonna fall out or get loose or anything. So that's the, that's the theory that I'm gonna try right now. Okay, now I have this cut. So I'm sure that I could probably have bought something that was just like this that was already cut, but Either way, uh, I used a, a Dremel to cut it off. It's kind of crude, but still works. I'm going to put this on here now and 
kind of get a feel for the twist that I need to do. I need to put a small twist in it. Um, that way I can hold it up here. However, I'm just going to do, I'm not sure yet. Basically I want it like this, just like that. Hold it up just like that. So I'm gonna have to take it and twist it just a little bit. I'm gonna use the uh, vise there. Twist it just a little bit to hold it there in place. It's not exactly straight up, but I can reposition it and kind of dig with it. But that's the idea. You know, the bend actually worked out pretty well. I put it in this vise here and I used this. I th then I used this, all right? I made sure this was screwed in. And then all I did was put that on there and then just bend it. And then I, you know, tighten it down and bend it. So that actually went really easy. And it looks like the bend is pretty nice. I might have to put it back here uh, in the vise just to, to, to change the bend if I have to get the angle different or something. But for right now, that looks pretty good. And actually it has turned out a little bit better than I thought it would. Uh, the bend was probably a little bit too aggressive, but I haven't really lined it up. What I did is I just put it in there and screwed it in to where it was kind of being held up. And I'm gonna kind of mess with this angle. Uh, I wanna make sure I kind of get it right to where it is straight off the back, coming straight up. And then hopefully, I'm not too worried about this angle as much as I am this angle. As a quick update, while I was uh, getting everything situated, I decided to swap out the stock little screw that all it did was screw into this piece uh, with a nut and bolt with a couple washers. Because you get those screw too tight, it would slip and then I wiggle this around and it would come loose. So it was just a shitty screw. So a nut and bolt ultimately is going to make it more, dur more durable and last longer, I would imagine. So, yeah. And there you go. Using the bolts. And the nuts, I uh, got it tightened up and it is very tight on the tube, keeping it very well in place. I got it pretty well lined up. It goes a little bit forward, but that is not bad at all. I think, it, I think it's just fine as it is. So, it's looking pretty good. The only last thing that I have to do now is put the top on it so rain doesn't get down in here, because that would kind of suck. I think it looks pretty good. With that in play, uh, it shouldn't really suck up any water. I mean, I'd have to get the ass in, in pretty deep for that to suck up any kind of water, I think. If anything, I could probably lower it because the water, the air box is gonna be pretty much up to the bottom of the steering wheel as far as I could tell. So to have that that deep, I don't really think I need it that deep. I'm only leaving it like that just because I know that when you get the ass in stuck a little bit, you can kind of dig and you know you might go down into the water more than what you would in the front. Not that big a deal, but just in case, I don't want it to just automatically you know get in there. So as far as this top piece here, it does stay on pretty well to the radiator hose, but it is not perfect and it does fall off with just a little bit of wiggling around on it. And yeah, so. It, I can see this falling off, especially going over terrain. So my genius idea to keep it on there, and I'm, again, I'm sure there's other tools, but my genius idea is Gorilla Tape. Let's hope that works. And now we have the final product. As you can tell, looks pretty clean. I definitely think that I need to do a better job securing it other than some Gorilla Tape, but overall, I think it's pretty good. Um, it ended up working out pretty well with the radiator hose. It, I mean, it kind of just lines up. It's not exactly perfect, but it's pretty good, I think. It's gonna do for what I need it to do. So, um, definitely happy with the, with the end result here. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking I might have to change is I might have to put a metal ring on the other end of that because that might bounce around a little bit. So, I just wanna kind of secure that a little bit more. Um, I just don't have another metal ring, so I'm gonna have to go get another one at some point. I just forgot to get one when I went back to Lowe's. And then I might have to look at finding a different way to secure that. So, overall, still looks pretty good.
Another concern I kind of sort of have and I'm not entirely sure is I know this thing flings mud like crazy so I'm kind of worried that the mud coming from the tires might come up here and might make it in there and then might make its way down. I don't really know but the good thing is, is that this is free turning. It, it's, it's in there pretty good but I can force it to come out and re-angle it or just remove it completely to where this just goes and fires backwards if I have to. But for now, I'm gonna keep it as is, just because I like it the way it is, and that's about it. So, yeah, the only reason why I made this video is because I could not find anything online pertaining to relocating the, the breather tube for this model at all. So I wanted to make something that would kind of show how I did it, what I used. Is it the best way? Probably not. Is it a decent way? I think so. Either way, we'll find out here in about a week and a half when I take it down to the river and put it through its paces. So, thank you for watching guys. Have a good day.